Now tonight we're going to talk about electronic art. That's right. You may remember several years ago, Carol, when a popular television commercial asked the big question, is it Memorex or is it Ella? Jazz purists might argue, could the technical wizardry of a tape recording ever really equal the excitement of a live jazz performance by a real diva? The answer is, of course, sure, it happens all the time. Technology and art have been a happy couple for some time, even if the purists won't admit it. A perfect case in point can currently be found in the Carnegie Science Center's Buell Planetarium where Gray Matters, the brain project, is on view. Recently, we visited to ask the question, can art produced with a mouse pad and Photoshop ever equal art made by the swing of a chisel or the swipe of a brush? Or what is electronic art anyway? Well, it was truly beautiful. All the audience being the little neurons inside the brain, all working as a group together as an audience, makes us kind of appreciate what the brain is really about. A lot of what scientists do is really beautiful, right? both the beauty of it and the technical side of it. To be able to combine those two things is, is, is fascinating. A lot of people might even be surprised to see art presented in this sort of context, a planetarium rather than a museum or a gallery. Essentially, art is art. It, it, moves us or stimulates us or provokes us or brings us pleasure. Well, what struck me very much was the fact of how democratic it is that we in the audience today took part in changing the work of art. Would you call this a more democratic art form? I'm fascinated by this. I think this is terrific to create a, a structure, a, a, an armature by which people can really participate in this work. When we sit in a theater, like we are here at the Carnegie Science Center, we're usually passive. And this experience is absolutely the opposite of that. Do you think that's something new for audiences? We felt that in order for the audience to really internalize uh, what we began to understand about the brain, they had to experience it directly. And that led us into an interactivity as a mode of expression and mode of understanding. The only experience that I've had outside of this one that has been related is going to a, a Penn State football game and doing the wave. And where, you, where you, you move and you have to coordinate. And the thing that I think is so relevant about that is when it's done well, it's beautiful. And you really do feel a kind of sense of pleasure and a sense of participation. So, are you ready to try another experiment? And one thinks of art that is electronic as being cold, as being totally quantifiable, as being measured, as being calibrated. All the words that don't speak the notion of emotions, which most people, that's what they think art is about. Mm -hmm. Does Humor does warmth have a place in electronic art. Most computer art or computer-generated art does seem to be very uh, coldly technologic. And uh, it's certainly not inherent in the medium. I mean, the medium can do anything one wants. They came from planet Axon. There is uh, quite a bit of humor in it. And the thing that's fun about it is that it it's really can be very eccentric humor. I mean, it, it, uh, it's a little bit like the far side. I mean, it's very, it can be very personalized. And uh, the, the kind of jokes that came out and, and fun that came out in this show really came from a script writer. He's the one that came up with the idea of the, the aliens continuing to mispronounce, oh, yes, mispronounce the scientist's name. Will you help us, Dr. Bleak? I think humor is a way of our sharing in, in our society, actually some of our deepest needs and deepest problems. And uh, we, we often um, use humor as a way of releasing a great deal of tension. <laughs> in this case, I think humor can, can serve as a, a vehicle for sort of bridging uh, maybe the fear that an, an audience might have of the complexity of a subject like the brain. So there you have it. It only took one brain, another Disney animator, lots of computer gigabytes, and a willing audience. It's new art.
still just as compelling as any fresco or statue. Try it out.